Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great, fantastic, actually. I've been looking forward to this video because it gave me an excuse to buy more palm trees. Sitting in front of me, I have three different palm trees that are going to probably not want to focus because they're very skinny. We'll do our best here, pardon the mess. About 15 minutes ago, I finished moving a few hundred plants into this garage and remembered, oh, I need to film the video on the palm trees. So here we are, some disarray. That's all right. For a minute now, I've been wanting to talk about some palm trees that I think would do much better indoors than the ones that we see the most often at our big box stores like the Majesty Palms and the Eureka Spawns, Spawns, Eureka Palms, like the Ludison's types. Palm trees that don't get absolutely massive and don't need a ton of water, will do okay with average humidity. They don't get so massive that they'll be really hard to move in and out of the house if you like to move your plants outdoors during the summertime and move them back in. Here they are, three palm trees that I think are very underutilized and should be grown more often as house plants because they do well indoors. Who cares about the focus? I'll be putting stuff up on the screen. There's not all that much to look at with these little sticks right now anyway. So for starters, this is a Tychosperma furcatum. It's a skinny one, see that? And again, like I said, not that much to see because these are just seedlings. That is one thing. May not always be able to find these in larger sizes. They're great because they're fast growing up to 15 feet. I know most people don't have 15 foot tall ceilings, but generally indoors, once these hit about six to seven feet, they should slow down with their growth. They're generally solitary, but they can be clustering. Clustering looks better, in my opinion, having multiples in a single trunk because they have that narrow bamboo-like trunk that only gets a few inches in diameter. Arch out from the center if you have a whole bunch of them planted in one container. Have a large crown shaft. It have a bluish silver tint to it. And they have a wild foxtail-like pinnae. Has a lot of texture to it. I think of these as basically a miniature foxtail palm a foxtail look-alike, or maybe even a substitute for a fishtail palm. Just a palm with neat foliage that is going to do better indoors than both a fishtail palm or a foxtail palm. Again, just talking about average household conditions. Only low to medium light should probably avoid direct afternoon sun, depending on where you live. They're good for indoors with average moisture and average light needs. You don't need to put grow lights over these if you have a nice bright area for them. And then as is going to be the case with all of these, they're going to be easier to move in and out of the house because of their smaller stature. Think of a Chemoduria sofritzii or microspatics, the bamboo palms. There are a lot of palm trees that you could call bamboo palms. Those are the ones that are most commonly called bamboo palms. They're nice because they have really skinny canes. You can move them in and out of the house very easily. They can be a little bit more finicky when it comes to having the right airflow and moisture so that you never have any brown tips on them. Don't always get the palm tree vibe that people are wanting. With all of these, you're going to get a very skinny but neat looking trunk. Having those skinnier trunks generally means the palm trees won't be quite as heavy. That's not always the case. Like Robolini palms, pygmy date palms, those are some of the heaviest palms that I move around because their root mass gets so huge. It's just like a giant brick of cement. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, next up, Arika triandra. Right there, this is nice foliage on this one. These become absolutely beautiful palm trees when they get larger. Again, fast growing. That's the case for all the palm trees here. A clustering palm with slender, shiny, heavily ringed, very narrow trunks, beautiful inflorescence on these that have really large red droops. And the flowers on those inflorescences have a very fragrant, florally scent to them or lemony. It's kind of lemony. I think that's the best way to describe it. Also called the perfume palm because of that intense fragrance that you get on those flowers. These are found in India to Southeast Asia, largely in the understory, which means it's a plant that's going to not want a lot of direct sunlight, right? It's going to need dappled light in the afternoons. Again, that depends on your climate. The more warm and dry your climate, the less sun you'll want to give pretty much all these palm trees. They're adaptable to a wide range of soils. It's very nice. That's something that always hints at versatility with the plant and also having a large growing range. Should keep them consistently moist. They have average water needs, you know, allow the top two or three inches of the soil to dry. That shouldn't be a problem unless they're in their seedling stage. You wanna make sure they stay consistently moist. I would say average light, technically they're usually listed as a low light palm, but indoors, I don't think low light would be quite enough. A nice bright room, but no direct light and they should do well with that. They might need just a little bit more warmth and humidity to thrive enough indoors to flower, but just to keep them going and growing, most homes, if you're over 70 degrees Fahrenheit and you're making sure you're staying on top of watering and fertilizing every few months, and they should do just fine. Rarepalmseeds.com, they have these on their website and they say, I'm quoting here, seeds germinate readily and plants are easy and fast growing, surprisingly robust and have a very tropical appearance. That is very true. 
One of the most tropical looking palm trees that you can grow in the house, in my opinion. I mean, you can grow a lot of tropical looking palms in the house, but the most sturdy. And as of right now, they have seed in stock, so check them out. They're easy to grow from seed. Might be something worth trying. Okay, the next ones I'm really excited about. Been excited about all of these, but these are just, look at how stinking cute that trunk. All you can see are the ugly milk crates that I forgot to move in the background. And just realized that my chair keeps making farty noises when I move around, so hopefully that hasn't been in the audio. Amaduria tepelote. These, that's, I know that was, was that a mouthful? I think I did okay with it. Look at that trunk. It's kind of wonky but still pretty cool looking. This one has something going on down in there too. It's just further down into the container. So a smidge bit harder to see. Of course, it's going to be harder to see. I'm gonna mostly focus on the trunk right now because I think it's really cute. Thrown up other images to look at of it anyways. Also called the Pacaya Palm. These grow quickly, like I said, with all these 15 to 20 feet. Okay, yeah, that is large for indoors. Narrow three inch ringed and glossy trunks are generally solitary but there is a clustering type that does exist, but it's more rare. They have very elegant arching fronds, similar to a Kentia palm, but prettier in my opinion, because they're glossy. They usually have a yellow stripe running down the middle of the penne. So it's a good way to identify these plants. Another one with a beautiful inflorescence, beautiful inflorescence on them that is commonly used, the male inflorescence anyways, is commonly used in cuisines. It's supposed to be pretty tasty. These are cold hardy-ish, mild frost, maybe into the mid twenties. That's actually the case for almost all the palms here. I'd, just say avoid frost, so just to be safe. No full sun, prefers dappled light. Again, an understory palm. These are range from Mexico down to Colombia. They're a good house plant light wise. And again, easy to move in out of the house because they're small stature, narrow trunk, low light, average moisture needs, average household conditions should suit them just fine. Not a palm tree that you're going to have to fuss over. They're really stinking cute. Getting palm trees that will trunk indoors can be challenging sometimes. The adenidias and foxtail palms are always really popular, but they just suck. They're not great palm trees for indoor culture, at least not long-term. Again, I'm speaking in general here. I always have people who come into the comments saying, I've had mine for 20 years, never had a problem with it. That's great. That's the exception, not the rule. Generally, most people don't have enough light, warmth, and humidity to grow those types of palms indoors. These are all palm trees that are going to be okay with not having insane, intense light. In fact, they would prefer that. They don't need a ton of humidity in order to keep growing and keep looking nice. In fact, the Tepelotes right here, these are ones that can dry out a fair amount in between watering. Like I said, with all these, I really think that that's something to avoid unless they're larger, more established palms. If you're getting them when they're skinny little scrawny seedlings like this that won't even focus because there's just, a, it's just a green stick. There's nothing to it. They don't have a lot of roots, right? So you wanna keep them well hydrated. None of these should ever be sitting in water all common houseplant stuff. I think it would be awesome if we could start seeing more of these things, these types of palm trees for sale. Okay, so they might cost a little bit more, but it's a plant you'll actually be able to have for a long time. I'd say that's worth it. Maybe you'll spend twice as much, but you'll actually get to keep it in the long term. At least that's always the goal, right? I really like the trunk on this one. It's wonky, so I shouldn't like it because it could be problematic in the future. As it is right now, these trunks will continue to thicken. So that should straighten itself out, and I don't think it'll be an issue down the road. I know for a couple of these, <laughs> I said that, like one gets 15 feet tall, the other one gets 15 to 20 feet tall. Okay, so uh, most of us don't have 15 to 20 foot tall ceilings. But for the most part, when you're growing these things indoors, once they hit like six to eight feet somewhere in there, the growth really slows down. Okay, I know eight foot is, that's like an average ceilings go with it you get it these are palm trees that you can have longer indoors but yeah eventually some of them will outgrow your home the triandra skinny one over here that areca eight feet for the most part the triandras are smaller they have a smaller more squat stature to them the others yeah okay they might get bigger someday it'll take them a minute it's like my alexander palm that i have outside well not outside right now it's 28 degrees right now but it's outside all summer long. One has basically stayed the same size for the last three years. It hit a certain height and it was like, all right, I can slow down now. The plants are going to rush to get out from the brush and everything down below to get the light that they need. And then they can hang out and chill and they don't have to rush as much to keep growing. Cool palms, the tepelotes, they're my favorite right now because they already have the rings on the trunk. Anytime I can get a palm tree that's going to produce the rings and have an actual trunk and crown shaft at a small size, I'm always going to be into it. I think that that just looks so cool. You're not going to have to wait as long as you do with some other palms to get that neat look. 
Even if it's wonky, that's okay. And apparently they will start to produce an inflorescence at a fairly small size. Look at that. Looks like they're getting ready to push something out there, which is also exciting. And look at how beautiful the foliage is on the Pacaya palms, even though they're small, so their fronds aren't fully mature. They're just miniature versions of what they should be when they're mature, but you can see that arching graceful habit that they have to them. And the pinnae droops just a smidge at the very ends and they come out and they just splay very, very well. Nice looking palm trees are in the ugly pots. It was just, things have been chaotic around here with all the plant moving and everything going on. I, they showed up in the mail bare root. These are from, I think it's called Grow Florida or Let's Grow Florida. They're not sponsoring me or anything. I had to pay for these. I will put a link to their website down below. They were pricey. I, that's just an honest review here. If you want to know about that company, the palm trees look pretty good. There were mealybugs inside of this one. They're not my mealybugs. I saw them on this when I took them out of the box. They're just tucked down inside the inflorescence, but I sprayed them with some neem. I'm not stressing about that. I've dealt with mealybugs before, but the prices, they're pretty hefty for some of these palm trees. So with ones like the Rica Trandra that Rare Palm Seed says they sprout readily and they're fast to get going, give it a try. They have them in stock. Why not? I might order some seeds and get some going. By this time, I would say next year, they'll be looking like that. They were just pricey and they were shipped bare root. And I just, I have a thing where when plants are really pricey, I would rather them just be shipped in a pot. That's my personal preference. That's just me. This isn't a review of their site. Check them out. If you're curious about these palm trees, want to order some, find some other sources for them and comment down below. Maybe you know some better places to get them. Maybe you have some other palm trees that you would suggest. Let everybody know. I have lists upon lists of palm trees for different things that I want to talk about this winter while we're in here filming during the growing season. I promise I'll, I'll get things cleaned up back there, I promise. And there are many other palm trees that are on my list of palm trees that are good for indoors, palm trees that stay small and are just unique. I have a whole bunch, but I wanted to start off with ones that I actually had here so you can see what they look like, even though they're kind of tiny and puny. But upon the screen, so you get the point. Cool looking palm trees. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.